Hey there, it's Moto Journo Chris, and I am here with Yamaha's Nikon GT, and I'm just gonna really quickly go over essentially what you're getting with this bike, and then I'm gonna talk about the GT differences. So straight up, you're getting the MT-09 engine, it's been tuned for sports touring, and it's a great power plant for this bike. This is a heavy machine, however, there is plentiful performance there. Uh, as long as you've got it in one of the sportier modes, not in the rain mode, the performance and the, the throttle response is absolutely beautiful and it will propel you up to illegal speeds very, very quickly. So despite the fact this being a very heavy bike, it is not at all restrained due to the engine. The MT-09 is kind of that perfect power plant for a machine like this. Obviously, you're getting the dual front wheel, front end. It's a quite a complex mechanical setup. It works really, really well. I'm really impressed with it. I think probably my one big gripe with the system is that I'm not getting that much feel from it, but I'm also not spending that much time with the bike. So I've got a question whether it's something that I would build up over time if I owned this bike, which is, that's quite often the case with unusual machines. You, you actually spend more time with the bike and then as a result, you get to know their quirks. So that's quite possibly the case. It's got really, really powerful brakes on those front discs. They're, they're Yamaha brakes. 15 inch wheels on the front. So they're, you know, smaller wheels. However, with that being said, I mean, they are really, really powerful. There's plenty of stopping power on this. And obviously having essentially four forks on the front makes for a very well supported front end. It's very, very stable through the twisties. It does have a tendency to fall onto the side of the tire quite quickly. However, it depends on how you're riding it. If I was finding if I kept the bike a bit more upright and got off the bike a little bit more, I found it quite good. If I was just leaning the bike right over, it had that tendency to fall right onto the side of the tire. And the other thing about that front end is at really low speeds through traffic, like if you're crawling along at a couple of kilometers an hour, you have to be really careful because those wide bars give so much rider input that it's very easy to end up kind of wandering the bike around with even just the smallest of rider inputs. And it's something you can ride around, but it's certainly not a machine that I'd really want to be stuck in or stuck on in traffic every day in, you know, really peak hour, horrible traffic. But I mean, obviously that's not what the Duper bike is designed for at the end of the day. Uh, it's got a very generous seat, a very generous pillion position as well. As you can see here, you've got like a nice stretch from the pillion seat down. You've got a great grab rail here. No doubt you'd be able to probably put some more luggage on. You've got rubber clad pegs there. You've got a little bit of vibes through the bars, but nothing that I find uh, too problematic for longer rides. Um, it's just there, it's noticeable, but it doesn't cause any numbness. It doesn't cause any pain in the hands. You've got quite a cool electronic system. You've got ride modes, you've got traction control. Obviously you've got ABS as well. So it's, it's well spoken for as far as the technology. And obviously the styling is very, very out there. And the, this whole bodywork section is there because all of those moving parts actually do come right up into those sections. So, you know, there's a lot going on when it comes to this particular machine. And you might think that the front end styling is a bit unusual, but it's very much necessary to make sure the mechanics work and there's room for them to work properly. I find the seating position nice and upright, obviously wide bars, you know, a very nice seating position, a very, very casual kind of leg position as well. It's very much, you know, sitting up like you're in a, in a chair essentially. And um, that doesn't stop you from really getting a bit more aggressive and getting right into the bike through the sportier corners, which is good as well. But it's still very, very relaxed for general riding. You don't feel the weight once you're moving. And I have to say, it's quite a nice thing through the corners. It's a nice thing to hustle through the corners as well. You know, there are some situations where you, you kind of, the, the steering gives it an almost boat-like feel with the way it um, tracks through the corners. Uh, but generally speaking, it's quite a, quite a nimble thing, quite a fun thing to ride. And to me, as I said, the biggest thing is just the, the lack of feel. Not necessarily a lack of grip, but just the lack of feel to me is what keeps coming back to me. And 
uh, affecting how far I kind of can push or how far I'm happy to push because I could just keep pushing until I find that limit but I'm generally not that kind of rider, especially not on the road, I just don't think it's worth it. But I can easily run it through all of the local twisties where I normally have a bit of fun. It's a nice thing. There were a couple of times where I was actually quite surprised at how much speed I was carrying through the corners on this, but there's also a lot of other vehicles around. So, you know, quite often you're just getting caught up behind other vehicles and getting a really slow run through. So, uh, you know, it's it's, it's a bike which has a lot of potential. Um, however, it's not a sports bike replacement. I just, I don't, I think it does a great job, like for instance, a, a touring bike would, like a nice sports touring bike would, um, but it's still very, very different. It's not really a replacement for that type of bike. Now with the GT, this is the Nikon GT, you're getting this cool tall screen. So you're getting a significant amount of wind protection and that is a really, really good, uh, item to be fitted to this bike. I have to say I did prefer the Nikon GT just because it's got a couple of inclusions which work really well. The other inclusion is those panniers. They're a solid kind of pannier. They're not waterproof but they're highly water resistant from my testing. I got quite a bit of rain when I picked up this bike and it also has cruise control. So on the freeway you can really cruise along for those long rides. You just set the speed, set and forget it essentially. It'll modulate the speed quite well so you shouldn't get in too much trouble going downhill. And uh, then it's got heated grips, which is probably my favorite item on this bike because it's been getting cold here in Australia and I love heated grips in winter because I normally wear summer gloves for as long as I can. And having the heated grips, I just crank them up to a higher setting and I'm comfortable. So I really do have to say, I really like the Nikon GT. I, um, I just think it's an awesome thing. I think what this does well and what you'll have a lot of fun on is basically touring and a bit of sports touring and having some fun through the twisties because it's surprising the lean angle that you can carry on it. Um, and I think there's a lot of potential in the bike that you'll learn as a, as a rider and as an owner. And it is very difficult as someone who doesn't spend that much time with the bike when it's something so different to really properly get a feel for what's essentially a totally unique system on the bike. And so I think, I think for someone who was considering buying one of these, I'd personally say, because I mean, really with a bike like this, money is probably not so much of a problem. I'd probably say go the GT, just for the extra additions, I reckon their choice. Um, and I think if you're tempted, definitely give it a try because it's something totally different, it's very unique, but it actually, it does the motorcycle thing properly and it far exceeds the expectations that I really had when I first saw it. I mean, obviously, you know, when Yamaha first announced these bikes, <clears throat> I think a lot of people kind of went, why and how? Um, I don't think the why really matters, but I think the how of it, they've done an exceptional job. And I do think that for the right person, they'd be happy with this. Perhaps instead of a motorcycle, but in some ways it's just a very unique offering that, that's really cool. Anyway, that's me. That's just a quick opinion on Yamaha's Nikon GT. I think it's a really cool motorcycle and it is a motorcycle. I said the same thing about the Nikon and it's got a lot to offer. It's not gonna be for everyone, but I think for the right person, they're really gonna appreciate a machine like this and probably have a lot of fun on it. Cause I know I've had plenty of fun and I'm really only scratching the surface, I think of the potential. Because if I spent a heap more time with the bike, uh, I think I'd start to come to terms with that front end a little bit more and be able to kind of figure out exactly what the limitations are. So let me know what you think about the Yamaha Nikon GT. Don't forget to sub, hit that notification bell and I'll be back soon. Thank you.